Hello, YouTube friends. This is the first in a series of biblical concepts. And this is what I call the New Testament cluster diagram. I devised this to help individuals better understand the organization of the New Testament. So let's just get into it. We have circles here, and each circle represents a book in the New Testament. Now, if a circle is within a circle, or if a circle is big or small, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a better or a longer book. I'm just simply putting them in circles to help you understand the organization of the New Testament. So let's start off with the Gospels. As you know, we have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I think this is beautiful because we have four individuals talking about their perspective of Jesus from four different angles. So in a sense, this is 4D, and it's absolutely wonderful to see how each of these writers saw Jesus Christ. Now, the first book of the New Testament, as we all know, is Matthew. But many biblical scholars, and I'm getting most of my information from Unger's Bible Dictionary and the NIV Study Bible Notes, but most biblical scholars believe that Mark was the first gospel actually written. And he himself didn't write it, but he got most of the information. So yes, he wrote, but he got most of the information from Peter, from Peter's teachings and from Peter's preachings. And so he basically put it in a document known as the Gospel of Mark. Mark was not an apostle. He accompanied the apostles, but he himself was not an apostle. And when he wrote the book of Mark, he wrote it from the perspective as Jesus being a servant and he basically wrote for Jews and Gentiles. The next gospel that I'll talk about is Matthew. Matthew got 91% of his, his, his information from Mark. And of course, Matthew was an apostle. He was a Jewish tax collector. And he wrote the gospel looking at Jesus as king. And he primarily wrote the book for Jews. Now we have Luke. Luke was not an apostle. He was a Gentile doctor who accompanied Paul on many of his journeys. And many individuals believe that Luke not only wrote the gospel of Luke, but he also wrote the book of Acts because the style and the layout is the same. As I said, Luke was a Gentile doctor and he wrote it looking at Jesus as a man and he wrote it for whomever wanted to read it. And then we have John, which is my personal favorite. John, in fact, was an apostle, and he wrote it looking at Jesus as God, and he wrote it for all who believed. And I particularly like John because, as we've already discussed, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are very similar, but John is very different. And John looked at Jesus from an entirely different perspective. And if we did not have the Gospel of John, we wouldn't have many great accounts of Jesus, chief amongst them being the resurrection of Lazarus. And so I just really love the Gospel of John. Now, let's go and talk about the apostles of Jesus Christ and then the family members of Jesus Christ. Because a lot of these names are similar, and that's where a lot of the confusion comes in, because names are similar, and we think that one individual perhaps wrote a book of the Bible when in reality they didn't. So the apostles are listed in Matthew chapter 10, verses 2 through 4. And we have Simon, who later Jesus changed his name to Peter, and we have the lines here. He wrote first and second Peter, and as I already discussed, Mark got his gospel primarily from Peter. Then we have Peter's brother, Andrew, and then we have John. This is not John the Baptist. John the Baptist did not write a book in the New Testament. This is the apostle of John, and he wrote the book of Revelations. He also, as I talked about earlier, wrote the gospel of John, and he also wrote John 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, or 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. His brother is James. And then we have Philip, we have Bartholomew. Many Bible scholars believe that Nathaniel and Bartholomew are the same person. And so there's a little confusion there. That's where I, I put this down here and have it as a, a footnote because that's what Unger's Bible Dictionary says. Then we have Thomas, known as the Doubter. We have Matthew, as I've already discussed, he wrote the book of Matthew. We have another James. There is very little known about this James, but 
I wasn't aware that there were two James until I read Matthew 10, two through four closely. Then we have Thaddeus, we have another Simon, this time the zealot, and then we have Judas who betrayed Jesus. And then whenever he ultimately committed suicide, he was replaced by Matthias. And this is in Acts 1 through 26 or 1 and 26. And then we have Saul who later based on the uh, the, the, the vision of Jesus on the road to Damascus changed his name to Paul, and I'm calling him apostle because he called himself an apostle. In Romans 1.1, 1, 1, he said, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And of course, Paul wrote 13 books of the New Testament. And now let's go over to the family of Jesus, because there are a lot of names that are similar to the apostles. So of course we know that the mother of Jesus is Mary, and this is in Matthew 1 and 18, but we know Mary was married to Joseph. Obviously God is the father of Jesus, but after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph had other children, which means that Jesus had half brothers and half sisters. And so in Matthew 13, 55, and in Mark 6 and 3, we have Joseph, that is the brother of Jesus, the half brother of Jesus. I'm sure he was named after his father. And then we have Jude, sometimes called Judah, and also sometimes called Judas, but this is not the same Judas that betrayed Jesus. And he did write a book of the Bible, the book of Jude, as I have already stated, sometimes he's called Judah, sometimes he's called Judas, but this is not the same Judas that betrayed Jesus and was an apostle. This Judas did not write a book of the Bible, but in fact, the half brother of Jesus did. And then we have yet another James. So this is a third James. This is the half brother of Jesus. He wrote the book of James. And then we have another Simon, but this is not Simon Peter or Simon the Zealot. And then Jesus had half sisters and the names are not mentioned, but in Matthew 13, 56, it states that Jesus had some half sisters. Now all the books are accounted for in terms of an author for the exception of the book of Hebrews. I believe, and this is just my belief, that this is an unknown writer. Some believe that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, but the style and the layout is different. And for the most part, Paul identified himself whenever he wrote a book by saying, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, the easy thing, and I say easy for lack of a better word, or the more logical thing or intuitive thing about the New Testament is that it is in chronological order meaning we have the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, even though we've already discussed that Matthew is probably the first book of the gospel written, but Matthew is the first book listed. It, talked about, it talks about the birth, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then as you move on to the last book of Revelations, the apostles for the most part are deceased for the exception of John, because John was on an island and he wrote the book of Matthew, or rather, I'm sorry, the book of Re Revelations. And so the New Testament is easy to understand in that it is in chronological order. Later on, I will have some sort of a diagram for you for the Old Testament, and it is a little bit more difficult to understand because the Old Testament is not in chronological order. And that is why I put it in a chart for you to better understand. So I hope that you enjoyed this particular presentation. And I hope this New Testament cluster diagram will help you not only better understand the organization of the New Testament, but read it and apply the principles to your life. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and share. And thank you very much for your time.